Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency meeting for June 12th. Uh, we have a quorum, so let's go ahead and do introductions and we can get to our agenda. Um, today, we're going to be a little bit expeditious because our executive director is graduating from Leadership Thurston County later this morning. And we want to make sure he gets to that celebration in time. So I uh, just want to put that out and congratulate you in advance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and do uh, introductions. So I'm Jim Cooper from the city of Olympia. Uh, let's go to Dave next. Dave Tobin, Pacific County Commissioner. Mike. Mike French, Clallam County Commissioner. Randy. Randy Nevelin, Mason County Commissioner. Emily. Emily Klaus, Thurston County Commissioner. Jill. Hi, Jill Warney, Grace Harbor County Commissioner. Great. And I'm just going to give a second for Joan. Joan, welcome. Introduce yourself, please. Okay, well, she's still tuning in. So, Jeff, will you introduce the staff, please? Uh, sure. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Johnston, Executive Director from ORCA. I'm joined here in the room uh, by Mike Schultz, Compliance Manager, Odell Hadley, Senior Air Monitoring Specialist, Debbie Moody, um, Office Manager and Public Records Officer, and Tiffany Flores, our Record Specialist. Um, joining remotely, um, Dan Nelson, Communications Manager and Zoom Master, uh, running Zoom from, up, from upstairs behind the curtain. Um, and Abby Roberts, uh, an engineer, is also uh, joining in remotely. And I'm also very pleased to introduce Jake Harmony uh, sitting here in the room with us. Jay, um, Jay joined ORCA uh, on June 3rd as our inspection supervisor. Let Mike tell you a little bit more about Jay during his compliance manager update. But I'll just say that I'm really excited to have Jay as part of the ORCA team. He and I worked together in the air program at the Department of Ecology more than 10 years ago. So then we each went our, we moved on to other things, but it's I'm very excited about having Jay uh, here as part of the ORCA team. Um, and unfortunately, Lynn, who's here for almost all these meetings uh, is out sick today so um she won't be joining us but so that's it from for staff introductions welcome jay thank you uh the other jeff your team jeff myers from law lyman and mike throgmorton also from law lyman well and joan well i don't have any team so i don't have any friends to introduce or anything so <laughs> it's just me Joan Cathy. We are your team, Joan. Yeah, from, <laughs> from the, the city of Tumwater. Glad to be here. Welcome. Okay, so I am looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any amendment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, so a couple of chair report items today. So uh, the first one is just a reminder that there is no meeting in August. Uh, so we'll take that month off. If it's on your calendar, make sure to mark it so you uh, don't end up sitting on Zoom by yourself. Um, and then just notice that I'm in the room today and Jeff and I talked about this and we thought that it would be uh, good to just be together uh, when we have meetings as much as we're able and would like to extend that invitation to everyone because it just feels like a, a more high quality meeting when we have a few people in the room and uh, we can make sure we appreciate the staff for all the hard work they're doing uh, to help keep the agency running for us um, and for the, for the broader community really. Uh, so next I'll go to uh, Mike. Can you give us a report on the bylaw committee meeting this morning? You're muted, sir. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So we had a good meeting this morning. Uh, we looked at our bylaws, made some et we're making edits for readability, clarifications to our OPMA public comment policies. We also had a pretty good discussion about electronic signatures and the usage of them and how they should be reflected in our bylaws, if at, if at all. And I think what we ended up with was we might need, if we want to use electronic signatures for things like our minutes, we might want uh, an electronic signature policy. And so uh, staff will be making the edits that we discussed in our committee meeting today and bringing those forward to the board in the upcoming months, but they also may be doing some time working on an electronic signature policy kind of to be to be delivered at the same time. Any questions for Mike? Thank you for keeping that work moving, sir. Appreciate it. You and the, and the committee and staff team involved. Um, it's kind of mundane, but important. Keep those legal documents up to date. 
Um, next, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff just to talk about some changes in our meeting form. Great. Um, thanks, Jim. And sort of uh, sort of building on what Jim said about how staff uh, and maybe some of you, if Jim, uh, here in the room, um, essentially the May board meeting wasn't as tight and focused as I think I and some of the uh, rest of the staff would have liked. Um, in fact, we didn't get through some of our business, or at least one of the business items. And so we've discussed this with the team um, here at Orca, talked a little bit about it with Jim. And so we're just making a few changes to, to try to tighten things up a little bit. Um, you might have noticed that the agenda has an estimated time for the, for the different agenda items just to try to keep things moving forward. And so we can ensure that, um, that we're going to be able to fit everything in within our two hours that we have for the meetings um, or less. Again, less. We want to make good use of everybody's time. Um, also, um, staff are gathering here in the conference room just because better communication among the team and just I think things will go a little bit better if, if we're all together to the extent to which we can do that. Um, and uh, let's see, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, so, so again, looking to make the best use of our meeting time together. I know it's important and that you all have a lot of other things. So uh, we, we're doing our best to keep the meetings operating and uh, and moving through the things that we need to talk about. So, And Jeff and I are kind of trying to be creative in this. We have ideas or things that would make the meetings more interesting for you. You know, we even talked about maybe the idea of having, uh, you know, switching back and forth between kind of more shorter, tighter business meetings and meetings that have a, a more longer, you know, deeper dive content item, but would love to hear your ideas because we we would, if we would appreciate it and the staff would appreciate it if there was just a little bit more um, discussion and, and conversation without really extending the meeting. But so it's clear that we're all engaged. And I'll just I'll, on that, I'll just add that. So at the end of the agenda, uh, the bottom of the agenda is a link to the next meeting on July 10th. And if you click on that, it brings up our board agenda planner. Um, it's just that's kind of a there's not a lot on there at this point. At the top of it, there's a table that has some of the topics that were that you've said or that, that have come up in the past uh, for briefings for the board. And then there's the, all of the dates and what we know about either finance committee or personnel committee or bylaw committee agenda items and then the board meeting agenda. So we'd love to get some input from you to help fill those things out um, in terms of things that you would like to hear more detail about, learn more about uh, the work, the important work that the agency does um, or you know, information that can help you be a more effective board member. So we'd love your input. Any questions on the um, chair reports? Okay, thank you. So let's go to public comment. Do we have any public signed in, Dan? We have not, and nothing in writing that I've received. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so that takes us next to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions, comments, or polls? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to an executive session, which we did not rehearse how we would do that in the hybrid meeting. So I'm just going to wing it. Um, and uh, so I'm going to all, what I'll do is I'll read the language around executive session that's provided by our attorney. And then uh, I'll ask uh, staff to exit the physical room and Dan will put staff in the waiting room and I'll put, or Jeff will put Dan in the waiting room and we'll have, and, and the board <laughs> will include Jeff in the, at least the first part of the executive session. So any, is that okay with everyone if I move forward on that path? Okay. Um, so the board will now meet an executive session for no more than 10 minutes to discuss the performance of the executive director as allowed by RCW 42.30.110G. The board will be in executive session until 1020 or earlier, at which time the regular session will reconvene. The board is expected to take action on the regularly published agenda items after the executive session. Any questions? Okay, let's go ahead and convene the executive session. Thank you everyone for moving around. 
Okay, we're reconvening the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency meeting for June 12th. Uh, just a little technology hiccup that took us an extra minute, but we were out of executive session by the declared time. That's a, a pretty big achievement anytime you have elected officials in the room. Uh, so next we will go on to the public hearing on the 2025 fiscal year budget, which starts on the 1st of July. And I believe I'm going to turn over to you and Linda. Yeah. Yes. So, um, uh, yeah, so thank you. This is an important day to pass the agency's uh, fiscal year 2025 agency budget. Um, the notice of the public hearing was published on the ORCA website, pushed out to our subscribers on May 6th. Notice was published in the Daily World uh, on May 11th, Peninsula Daily News on May 11th, and in the Olympian on May 12th. So Lynn and I briefed the Finance Committee, discussed the proposed budget with them at the um, April and May meetings. Um, we then presented the proposed budget to the full board uh, during our uh, May meeting. Um, we have not received any written comments. Um, and as I mentioned uh, during the briefing last month, I believe this is a very strong budget for the agency, it continues to make important investments in our staff and the things that we need to carry out our mission and to do the work that uh, the, the work for you and the people of our six counties, uh, the work that they depend on us to do. Um, so uh, for as an example, uh, updating the agency's strategic plan is something I've wanted to do since I joined the agency almost two and a half years ago, but other things have taken priority, but now I think we're in a place to be launching that in the coming months. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, this budget uh, has some, uh, some funds for the strategic planning process and a variety of other things. So I'm really excited about passing the budget and getting to work on those things. Um, there is a projected draw from our contingency funds of $416,000 uh, because the projected expenses do exceed projected revenues. Um, but again, I believe we're in a very solid place to manage this. As you probably remember, we often there's often an imbalance uh, there, and we because of the conservative way we manage the budget, um, we often come in without using those contingency funds. So, but we do have a current contingency fund balance of uh, almost $4,300,000. So again, I think we're in a strong place to manage this. And it is something that I and the rest of the staff will be looking very closely at in the coming year in terms of our fees um, and other, uh, other revenues. Um, so there's a lot of information in your 22 page uh, budget package, but I hope you've all looked at those and I'm ready to answer any questions. Questions on the budget before we go to the public hearing. Well, let me just lift up again, the very great detailed notes in the front of the document that Lynn provided that I had such a great improvement in, but it's just, it makes it really clear for the board to, and the community, I think, to understand the moving parts and how things are shifting from year to year. So please pass that along. Okay. Yeah, we will do. One thing, I mean, that I know that that what used to be a two page is now, I think, a four page. So I'm wondering, is it now too much detail? So again, I want this to be in a useful document. So I would love any feedback from board members on the package that we've put together, the information that you have. Um, so, but, um, uh, but it's but great. I'm glad that it's it's useful. My my read was long the first time, but when I went back through it the second time, there's four pages worth of change. Okay. So it feels it feels like right for what you're doing in this cycle. I don't know if anyone has anything else to say about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the public hearing. So the public hearing on the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency fiscal year 2025 budget is open. Any comments from the public? Is there any public? We have no public see. in the room or in the Zoom, and we have not received anything in writing. Okay, so um, not seeing anyone at the door or outside the window either. Uh, the public hearing is closed. So with that, I will open up the fiscal year 2025 uh, budget for conversation, discussion, uh, amendments, or a motion. I'll say something really quick. Um, I just wanted to echo what was said about the introduction in the beginning of the budget. Um, I'm, you know, obviously a pretty new county commissioner and newly appointed to this board as well. And um, 
I've seen a lot of budgets and I've seen a lot that are poorly put together, um, kind of convoluted and hard to understand, but this was really clear and having the summary in the front made it even easier to figure out what was going on. So thank you for putting that together. Great. Well, you're welcome. And I will definitely pass that on to Lynn. Mike? Yeah, I uh, wanted to echo those comments. Um, I thought that for the summary, I think you hit kind of the right level of detail. Um, I just wanted to comment on a couple things. I was really glad to see the strategic fund, the strategic plan funding in there, as well as the staff development work funding. Um, and I know we had talked about this somewhat recently with OliMap, but it looked like you know there's a small increase in funding to them, and so that appears to be uh, you know continue to be a, a fruitful um, partnership. So I'm, I'm glad to see that continue on. I didn't really have any substantive you know. Um, suggestions or changes. And anything else? Okay, well, so one comment for you all, just because Mike brought up the, the performance planning and performance management, um, it's been really great to see that happening here. And it's one thing that I've realized that as a board member in other board positions, I haven't asked about is well, how are you doing performance management for the whole staff team? Uh, and since we've been implementing this at the Clean Air Agency, I've found another agency that I'm on the board that doesn't do any performance planning at, at all. And so I just wanted to plant that seed that it's a good question to ask because uh, our public servants deserve that level of care. And I appreciate that Jeff has brought that to our agency. Um, I also want to say for just for the record that this budget does include a three and a half percent cost of living increase in pay for all staff, including the executive director. Joan has a question or a motion or a comment. I have I have a comment. I wanted to um, agree with with Emily and just say you know I I've been on this board for a few years, and um, I liked the. Uh, the breakdown, the comments, the extra things that Lynn did, I thought it made I thought it made a big difference. There were things that helped me understand even you know more how we spend our money and um, how you're managing uh, everything, uh, Jeff. So I, I thought that served a really good purpose, and I hope it, uh, I hope we continue that. That that was very good. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to suggest it to my city. <laughs> the notes section for a city budget might be about 50 pages. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'd rather, uh, sometimes looking at those 50 pages might help me more than the others. Right. Totally. Well, I, I, I may see Lisa on Friday, so I'll pass that along that, uh, that your request is coming. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't please. Thank you. <laughs> this is being recorded. I'm getting enough trouble as it is, so thanks. <laughs> well, hearing no more discussion, is there a motion to approve the fiscal year 2025 budget as presented? I will so move. Second. I'll second. A motion and a second and a third. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a budget. Thank aye. you, everyone. Okay, so next we'll go to our executive director report. Okay, well, um, we another way that we're mixing things up today uh, is that, um, so I'm going first. Uh, usually the executive director goes at the end, but we wanted to put it first just so that if we ran out of time, I could get across town because as, as was mentioned earlier, I am graduating from the Leadership Thurston County program today, um, program of the uh, Thurston County Chamber, uh, the Chamber Foundation. So uh, I'll be joining uh, my 37 classmates and, and graduating. And I just wanna say it's been an excellent program <clears throat> for me personally, but also professionally. And I think also for ORCA, it's been a great opportunity for me to get out with uh, a lot of different organizations here in Thurston County. Excuse me. Um, to make, to make connections 
and uh, that I think we're going to, that I and the agency are going to be able to draw on and build upon in the months and years to come. So I really appreciate Orca in supporting me and participating in this. So, but again, looking at our time, I think we'll probably finish up in time. So I won't have to duck out early. But so the things that I was going to mention in terms of my director's report. Um, so the past uh, month or so since we last met has been pretty busy. I've spent time, a lot of time out of town. Uh, between May 14th and 17th, I was in Philadelphia attending the National Association of Clean Air Agencies meeting. Um, uh, the, these NACA meetings, uh, membership meetings happen twice a year and are always a great opportunity to meet with, learn from other local, state, and federal agencies. Um, I during the meeting, I was on a panel on uh, entitled State and Local Best Practices, and I gave a presentation entitled uh, Innovative Partnerships, uh, Reducing Trash Burning in Unhoused Camps, based upon the work that we've been doing with, with, with OLIMAP. And it definitely generated a lot of conversations. I think there's interest because, of course, every community in the country is dealing with these issues. And uh, and just trying to come up with innovative ways to address uh, some of the, the the things that come up, I think, what is of what was of, of general interest to to everybody in the room. Um, let's see. So then, in uh, uh, May 29th and 30th, I was up in Seattle for the Georgia Basin Puget Sound International Airshed Strategy Committee meeting. Kind of a mouthful, um, but. Uh, it's, it's a meeting that's jointly hosted by the EPA and Environment and Climate Change Canada, essentially, uh, with, uh, which is the federal equivalent for Canada of the EPA. Uh, the group meets twice a year to coordinate uh, air quality management on both sides of the international border. And of course, Orca's northern border uh, is adjacent to the international border in Vancouver Island. So, um, and again, this is a inter international air shred, air shed strategy committee that is set up that there's actually um, formal uh, treaties between the US and Canada that specify these groups that meet. Um, there's one here, there's a couple in other parts of the US, but that was a really good opportunity to meet, um, learn more about the Canadian uh, air quality management uh, uh, regulations and those kinds of things. Um, and so, and then looking out the next few weeks, again, I'm just excited about having a new budget. Um, and again, there's a lot of good work in there that the budget will fund. And so I'm excited about getting together or getting started on some of those things. Um, and to wrap things up, um, since Lynn isn't here, I'll do my best to channel Lynn and just mention a couple things that I think would have been on her list. Um, one, uh, we have got word, for, we've been working with a couple of our tenants that there's going to be a couple a little bit of turnover. Uh, so two will be um, looking for two new tenants uh, in a couple of our offices, but I'm confident that we'll be able to fill those pretty quickly. But um, Lynn and I can keep you updated on that um, in the coming months. I think they will be vacant uh, maybe at the end of July or sometime in August. Um, and then secondly, just related to our agency's wellness program, uh, during the month of May, 18 staff, which at that point was 100% of our staff, participated in a trek around trek around town challenge, encouraging everybody to move and get steps. And so we again we had great participation, and again just shows I think the the um, how engaged and active are the agency's wellness committee is. So um, I know Lynn would be proud and would want to mention that. So with that, I think unless there are any questions for me. I will hand it off to Mike Schultz, our compliance manager, to go through the compliance update. Take it away, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Um, hello. Good. Good uh, morning. I guess um, there's a uh, sheet that's on top of the uh, that Debbie sent out with the um, inspection group and the engineering group packet. So when I'm done with the highlights, I'll be happy to take any questions and answer anything that you guys might have. Um, that? yeah, yeah, Dan, so, that's your desktop showing yeah, up. Yeah, that is not my highlight screen, <laughs> but uh, um, I will go over those yeah, while Dan finds those. Uh, okay, so uh, the inspection team highlights. You want to start with what we're happiest about, and that is Jay, as um, Jeff mentioned, has started with us uh, June 3rd, so he's like about eight days in and doing a great job already. Um, he brings some good uh, management things I've seen already that he's working with the, the staff. Um, he comes to us from the Washington State Parks and Recreation 
commission where he worked for about six years as an assistant region manager. Um, he also, prior to that, had 10 years with ecology, um, smoke management specialist and some other things on that, on his uh, good resume. He was working in the central region, so a lot of good smoke experience. Uh, we're going to tap into that quite a bit. He's got a, a bachelor's of science and a, a arts of science and a master's in public administration, I believe, from Evergreen State College. So he comes uh, well prepared to do the job. Um, and then the fun stuff about him that I think is cool is he's uh, definitely a snow enthusiast. He was a, 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 a lift operator and he's also a is now or has been a yeah, class four, four, yeah, class four whitewater river guy. Sounds pretty interested and excited so, so he, he bringing lots of good work skills and, and recreation skills i guess for this, to us so uh, welcome like we need to work a rafting trip yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so we're happy to have jay and, and welcome jay and thank thanks you, for man. coming on board thank you um the other highlight for the inspection team would be that uh, i just ran across this note the other day um <clears throat> looking at our inspection numbers fifteen thousand inspections um on our database and so i thought that's a big really good number <laughs> it's a big one it shows the work that uh, past inspectors and the current inspectors uh have uh there, there's some you know caveats way back when the big started where there were some reviews in there and stuff but uh, uh that's a big number just wanted to highlight that because that's kind of shows you what the uh, inspectors do and have been doing for many many years um, going out inspecting a whole lot of sites. And these are just um, the sources, the facilities. It doesn't deal with, you know, land clearing burns and, and complaints. These are just 15,000 uh, registered source inspections over the years. So a big not round number, something to be proud of. And I think that shows the support that ORCA um, has been doing for the employees and where we've been out in the community for uh, a lot of years. I mean, it's roughly 550 a year. You know, we've gone anywhere. I was just doing you know, it. Was yeah, yeah, you know, and it was roughly something like that. And you figure that, uh, and we've gone through four inspectors now where we're at. We've had two inspectors at a time, and just as we ebb and flow. So it's been a lot of work. They've done a great job in the facilities out there. Uh, we've, we've been to a lot of places in our six counties. Um, so I think that's a, a good note. And we'll hopefully get another 15,000 in the next 30 some years. Um, Okay, jump into the engineer team highlights. Pacific Northwest Renewable Energy, PNWRE, about every month for the last four months, I've said something about these guys. He's in the big pellet mill going in in the Mason, I'm sorry, in Grace Harbor County. Uh, we finally got through the final determination and it was issued on May 14th. So they've got the permit from us. Um, and uh, that is a huge um, accomplishment by the engineering staff to get that done and to get that signed off. and. Uh, uh, you know, they, they passed the muster with us. Um, well, uh, if anything further happens, there's always a 30 day appeal period. I just want to say, that. um, but we'll let you know. But right now, it's all in their hands, approved by us. That's good news for the harbor, also. We also had another public hearing this month since the last time we talked. It was AGP, um, the meal, um, company that ships meal, brings it in by train, ships it out by. Big ships, and we had a public hearing because we're basically doubling their size, expanding it down again in Grace Harbor. And uh, thank you to Jill for coming to that public hearing. She was there in there attendance. There was way too many people there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, 10 people, no comments were made. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got that ready to sign off on the final determination as soon as they do their final payment. So that'll be another big, um, basically, permit being approved. So engineers are glad to get those off their desk. Um, general highlights, uh, the gas exemption rule was finalized. This was the one we've talked about a few times about the um, uh, uh, letting the ones that have 5,000, I'm sorry, 50,000 gallons of gas throughput a year drop out if they choose to. Uh, for three consecutive years, 50,000 gallons or less, they can petition us to drop off the registration. They still have to do all the same rules, but they can drop off a of registration. Um, so that one actually is finalized. But we have some on our website. We have forms we can hand out to the, um, to the gas stations that fit that. We've already heard back from the state. They say they aren't going to do that, even though we have small 
gas stations because they can't do it throughout the state. They want to stay uniform. So, so we've heard from the state. What does that mean? We've they have the one of their environmental people so that we deal with said that they don't want to. Um, so uh, did you, what, what's that particular state agency? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the state DOT. I'm yeah. sorry. I should have. Yeah, for us, it's the state. They have all the DOT, you know, uh, tank that's out there in their DOT uh, yards that they maintain. You know, um, state patrol uses them. Uh, County people will use them, but they're all the card locked at the state facility. Sorry, I was in there. But yeah, so the, we've been inspecting those a lot of years. They're very small, especially when you get out to the Hump Tulips one. There's one out there. There's one in uh, Montesano, uh, Nacelle, and they don't get a lot of use. They could have qualified for this. There was like six of them, but they told us they're environmental person. They don't want to do things differently countywide, so they're just going to stay in it. So uh, again, their choice, but we have about another... 18 or so that could probably opt out if they choose to. Um, we'll just wait and see. Uh, they, uh, they adopt by rule um, change. Uh, it's familiar for any of you who have been on the board last year and the year before, I think several years in a row. It's just a simple change that uh, says we're going to go from uh, July 2023 in our rules to July 1, 2024. Uh, that's been sent to the code revisor. It was something that uh, we got permission several years ago from the board to go ahead and proceed with this without getting permission from the board. So we've done that. It'll have to be on, uh, as public hearing next July. Um, so we'll have that. It'll be again. I don't expect any comments. It's just a simple date change to say relevant with the correct year. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to bring up is we've got uh, our AQS2, Rob Weiland, he's up at a smoke conference up in Seattle. It's a really good conference. They talk a lot of good information with other groups that are involved in smoke management and anywhere from wildfire smoke, uh, smoke dispersion, forecasting, monitoring. Um, even there's some air curtain incinerator conversation on the list. And that's something that will probably be coming up more and more as you guys haven't heard about that. Um, but that's got a lot of uh, interest. Um, so. He's up there, Rob, getting some information to bring back to us from that. That's my wrap-up. Questions? Questions for Mike. Okay, Odell. Great, uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, so air monitoring report, it's a quick one this month. <laughs> for, uh, on behalf of Jeff. So um, yeah, next slide. Uh, so you can see that we had, um, good air quality in almost all of our sites uh, for the month of May, which is normal, we expect that. I wanna point out one change here that the Lacey BAM as the beta attenuation monitor I, I presented on last month, we now have two PM 2.5 sites operating um, or PM 2.5 monitors operating at that site. So you'll notice there is a difference there between the two and they nominally should be measuring the same thing. Um, the Lacey and F uh, maxed out at 5.1, but you'll also notice only 20 good days there. And we think a spider got into that nephilometer. That happens sometimes, and it causes the signal to go bananas. So I pulled that NEF, uh in mid-May, and so it did not record, the, record that high value that the band did, uh, which is the 9.6. It, it's possible that it, it is on that same day. I actually have to go back and check that, but I also mentioned that the BAM does measure slightly higher values some of the time at Lacey. So that's another discrepancy that you can expect to see between those two uh, analyzers. But overall, they do a pretty good job. So uh, next slide. Uh, we also are now monitoring ozone at the site. We do have our little 2B. It's not a, an FEM, but it me measures ozone there year round. We are now also hosting the ozone monitor from the state, which is an FEM or federal equivalence monitor. And so that's a seasonal pollutant. And so you can see that the two analyzers, the blue and the orange, are agreeing quite well with each other. They're measuring the same thing. That's what we like to see. I've also uh, put the temperature. This is the ambient temperature, outdoor temperature, along with that ozone, just so you can sort of see how the temperature does drive uh, ozone concentrations. Um, one of the things I want to point out on this slide is that we got up into the mid 80s, which is very warm for May here in the Pacific Northwest. And you can see that the ozone peaks uh, start to climb on those days. 
still well below 70 parts per billion, which is the eight hour national ambient air quality standard for ozone. So that's great. Um, one of the things we have to be careful of is if we have consecutive hot days in a row, the ozone concentration will build uh, even if the temperatures stay. So if you look at those two maximum days, they're about the same where you have 85 degrees for a maximum, but you can see that the ozone on the second day has jumped up. And so that's one thing we like to keep uh, an eye on is if we have several days of very hot days, we expect to see the ozone continue to rise. So it's not a one-to-one, -one. Um, it is cumulative. Um, okay, so that's our ozone data for May. Next slide. Other monitoring highlights. Um, as usual, we had site visits to Chica Peak, try to do those once a month. Um, one thing I want to mention about the Chica Peak site is we were, I think I mentioned that there was looming power complications at the site uh, coming. Did I, I did mention that. Next. Anyway, so uh, Jeff and I were able to meet with the FAA yesterday and get a little bit more information on that. And it was actually worse than we thought. So the budget for the FAA is much higher than what was quoted to me by PUD. I think PUD was just quoting maybe their section. We're still exploring that discrepancy. But uh, the word from FAA was, yeah, we don't have that in the budget. So you could be looking at two, three, four years out. Um, PUD says that if the power goes out or fails, they're not going to fix it and that we're on borrowed time. So uh, our next steps there are to find a second or temporary site. The good news is, is with the two new trailers or with the new trailer and the old trailer, everything is now actually fairly mobile. Um, so it would be a matter of going up there, securing what we wouldn't remove from the trailers, and then, you know, having a contractor move those two trailers to a secondary site, uh, as long as it's approved by EPA and improved. So there are some, we're, we're working, we're, we're trying to keep Chica Peak going and, and, and work on the project. We'll also be talking to EPA and, and trying to explore it. Uh, we have uh, robbed at a quarterly quality control check at the Shelton Fire Station, so that site's good. We had multiple site visits to Mountain View. Lacey, that's the BAM, requires more um, site visits than the Nephilometer, but we actually are getting more money from Ecology to pay for that in our PM 2.5 grant, so that's making up for that extra time. And we had our, our beginning ozone audit with Ecology up there site as well. Jeff mentioned the Georgia Basin Puget Sound International Airshed Strategy Meeting, or let's just say IAS. Um, and I went up there with, with Jeff and presented uh, to them the Chica Peak infrastructure. The Canadians have an interest in the Chica Peak site as it's kind of right there on the border as well, looking at, at air coming in. Um, well, we're hoping to keep it up there, even if well, you have to move it. They can pick up the wow. They're not interested. <laughs> <laughs> not six million dollars here. No, 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 I don't think they're um, lots of And then also, I just want to say that Olivia Hacken, who is the UW uh, graduate student uh, running the ascent analyzers up there at Chica Peak right now, also presented on her data. So that was, that was great. Um, the Ecology's gas monitoring standard operating procedure, I did complete a final review of that. And so that should be published soon. So we were able to put our input into the state. I think I'm one of like two operators that runs all of those monitors. So I was really happy to have an opportunity to, to weigh in on that standard operating procedure. And then lastly, um, we improved the Port Angeles sample inlet support system that was failing up there. We cleaned the lines and replaced the purple air sensor. We are still working with Port Angeles uh, information technology uh, to get that new sensor communicating. I believe Rob is next going up there. I want to say the 20th, but it could be the 22nd. I'd have to check the calendar. Um, and I want to recognize Eric Watercott for his phenomenal assistance. I had contacted him about getting just allowed to, to add on to their guest Wi-Fi, and he set up a whole SSID that's specific for ORCA that's only for us cool. with our own password and has just been really phenomenal um, about helping us out get that. So when Rob goes up there to actually, I tried to connect it remotely. I, we need a person on site to connect to the new SSID. So when Rob goes up there, um, Eric is going to be on standby to help him out if he needs. So even that really above and beyond. I just want to shout out to Eric for that. And he, he's with the Port Angeles Fire Department? No, he's with their Port Angeles City of Port Angeles oh. Information Technology. Oh. So there's my group, but he's been just really great to work with. Great. So uh, next slide. 
So these are just some pictures from our uh, site upgrade there at um, Port Angeles. And so I really also want to acknowledge Tyler Gage. I believe he's a lieutenant or captain. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I wasn't writing in that way. Um, <laughs> Rob got to <clears throat> reenact his 10 year old fantasy of riding in the bucket lift to the fire station or the fire truck. I think he was maybe a little disappointed uh, at the end. He goes, that wasn't quite as much fun as I, I wanted it to be. <laughs> Um, but we did get some good pictures. We had some very heavy uh, pieces of concrete and a piece of wood to support that to get on the roof. And this was really the safest way. And so the fire department was just awesome at, at helping us out with that. So um, big thanks to them. And the next slide, uh, just some shots of our new inlet with the purple air sensor installed. It's all nice and shiny. Um, you can see the view from the roof of the fire station there. And, and that's Rob grabbed a picture of me trying to pull a... a I don't know if I'm actually taking it off or putting it on, but that's the, the bug screen so we can prevent spiders from getting into the nephilometer. So all right. um, that's all I have. Questions for Odell? A little applause in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Odell, can you remind us the where you're at in the project for replacing the Lacey shelter? So um, I believe we have had that funding approved by Ecology. So it's a pass through through Ecology is going to manage that. So they requested that from the IRA or through IRA, the, the infrastructure. Inflation in, reduction. Inflation, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so they're kind of putting out the request. They gathered all the requests from the locals. They presented it to EPA and then they're they're giving us the money um, to do that. We haven't gotten the official award yet, and and Jill has set that date for January 1st of 2025. So that when we get the money in from there, we can move forward with the plans. Will you have to rebid it or can you use the group that you already used at Chica Peak? I will have to rebid it. It's a new project, yeah. So I'll have to rebid those both the, the new structure. We'll have to be bid, uh, and that's what's going to take some time. So, and I really want to make sure that trailer goes in place during the summer, so we don't interrupt school. school. Um, so, if I can't get the bid out and get the bids approved, and get a guarantee that I can get the trailer, which uh, by August, um, it might be pushed to summer of 2026. Okay. But usually, we get three years to spend out funds. Cool. Okay. So that's not a problem. It's just wanting to get it. Thank you. That's good. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Odell? Dan. If you're talking, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, we're in the midst of Smoke Ready Week, uh, which is our coordinated uh, multi-jurisdictional, multi-agency push to uh, educate people about wildfire smoke uh, and the various topics surrounding that. Today is day three. This is our, our current post. Um, and then share it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, next door, and linked via uh, hashtags, uh, hashtag smoke ready, uh, if your folks want to share that. Uh, Getting good response from that. Uh, I will note that we've actually had shares of our social from a few eastern Washington counties, uh, but none of our own counties. So uh, we need to do better. Kittitas County is leading in sharing our content. Um, I think I saw Dan that the Thurston Emergency Management had uh, had still had shared yeah um, stuff yesterday. Yeah, but yeah, so Thurston has has shared. Uh, Kittitas County is is following us and sharing everything we do. So <laughs> I don't know if that's because we've actually talked to them and, and tried to encourage them to do that. Uh, so the outreach has, has paid off. Uh, we also, <clears throat> excuse me, we also attended the, uh, the uh, Grace Harbor County Home and Garden Show uh, this month or this past month and had great turnout there. Uh, Thank you, Jill, for coming by and, and talking to staff. Um, we are scheduled to attend the Olympia Harbor Days Festival again this year. Uh, that's Labor Day weekend, first weekend of September here in Olympia. 
and we participated in multiple county uh, summer weather hazard events, uh, most recently Thurston County, but previously Mason and, and Jefferson counties as well. And we're starting to coordinate uh, more closely with county uh, health departments. So I uh, want to keep that going, not just for this the wildfire smoke events, but to maintain dialogue and coordination of efforts with, with the local healths throughout your, your jurisdictions. Uh, and then on the wildfire or the wood stove program, as you can see on, on my report, uh, we're well on track to uh, meet our budget. And we had a meeting yesterday. We may actually, uh, if we close out, there will likely be some additional funding we could apply for in the spring if, if we continue to have the success we're showing now. Um, we should be able to increase that funding level a little bit if we find we need it, but that's still a, a little bit down the road. So we'll keep you posted on that. And then the other uh, news, I've been working closely with Jeff and, and some of my colleagues and the communicators to uh, figure out the best means of, of maintaining social media archiving uh, as we build up our social media presence. We wanna make sure we're meeting the, the state requirements for record retention. Uh, historically, we've had all of our social media content driven straight off our website. So the the record of, of or the source record was our website. Uh, but as we build up our social media content uh, profile, we'll have more original content originating on those social media platforms. So we wanted to make sure we were staying within the law and, and retaining those. So we interviewed uh, three vendors and, and got some bids and, and uh, figured out what services best meet, met our needs and, and selected a vendor just this week. So that's just all I got. A vendor for all of the, re the air agencies or just for ORCA? Just for ORCA. So we, I, I coordinated with, with some of my colleagues in the other air agencies, saw what they were doing and uh, compared. And, and actually, based on my research, we're, we may see one or two of those other agencies change to the vendor we selected because uh, of price and the quality of service and, and the, the level of service. Uh, some are using a vendor that's not designed for smaller agencies they're designed for for agencies with 30 or 40 social media channels not just five or six but but, but there is one other local air agency who is using this particular vendor they've been yes, happy. and and Good. multiple jurisdictions multiple cities and and counties and i think association of washington cities is using them and and spokane and <clears throat> northwest is going to switch to them so Great. Any questions for Dan? Okay, so we'll go to good of the order. Anything for the good of the order? Emily? I have a question regarding, um, so this came up at a Board of County Commissioners meeting this week. Um, the question of what ORCA's role is in like burn bans or any sort of smoke um, ordinances or guidance because we, we have a briefing coming up on Monday um related to burn bans and firework policies and so i was just wondering if somebody could touch on like orca's role in that process i know that there are like the burning fee schedules that start on july 1st but i don't know related to fireworks it gets really contentious this is my first year um getting ready for the fireworks conversations and i've heard that they get pretty intense so if you could speak on that that would be um great it goes away if you ban them. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this is a contentious issue, and and it gets confusing. I don't know. It seems like it's been maybe well. It's it's confusing. Um, one of the reasons is so Orca has air quality related burn bans, but then there's also fire safety burn bans, and we have in our regulations because of work because of coordination with Thurston County. So there's the Thurston County. Actually, let me hand it off to Mike, who's been around, uh, can give some of the history. But 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 yeah. So I'll stop talking and turn it to Mike. Okay. Yeah. The basic is fireworks. We're not involved with because that's a fire safety issue. Um, the fire danger burn ban. We have authority over it because it is in our rule based on history with the fire departments and the board. 
we have that July 15th through October 31st, I'm sorry, September 30th or 31st, October 1st. That period is a burn ban regardless of the county commissioners uh, or the fire marshal call it because orchid rules say you cannot burn during that period. But again, take fireworks out. That's a local issue. We don't get involved with those. If people complain of smoke or whatever, that's not a source that we can regulate. Um, and I won't do If the other counties have questions, I'll deal with it too. But that's basically it is that, and we can meet with you separately if you want and go over this. I mean, the day tomorrow, whenever you want. There's some more intricacies, but um, yeah, we have the fire safety burn ban in our rules so we can enforce that for Thurston County, but not the other five counties. Um, if the fire marshal calls or the county commissioners call a fire burn ban earlier, like say July 1st, we will honor that and not issue any land clearing burn permits, but we cannot enforce the fire safety burn ban because that is not an ORCA rule. It is called by the commissioners or the um, fire marshal. So I hope that makes a little sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what were those dates that you mentioned? For the yeah, general, it's July 15th through September 30th. September 30th. Yeah. Dan has an add on. Yeah, I just want to clarify. So the, the Thurston County summer burn ban is administered by ORCA. We have it in our rule at the request of the Thurston County Outdoor Burn Committee, which was a body that existed 20 years ago when this was all implemented. It is a fire safety burn ban. The reason, the sole reason for the, the summer burn ban is fire safety. And that, that's been the point of contention and confusion to a lot of folks. It's often referred to as Orca's air quality burn ban. It's it's a Thurston County requested by the the group, which entailed Thurston County, Thurston County fire chiefs, Thurston County uh, fire commissioners, emergency management, uh, Capcon or whatever they're called now, uh, the nine one one service, uh, and DNR all said we need a fire safety burn ban. It's better to have designated dates. Uh, a few other counties have done the same thing. Uh, in Clallam County, the fire marshal just has said July 1 through September 30th each year. Jefferson County, same issue. They usually are a July 1 through sep or a September 30. Um, and then the other counties, uh, the fire marshal will make those declarations based on fire conditions. But uh, the summer burn ban is administered by ORCA, but it is fire safety related. And that July 15th through September 30th burn ban is just in Thurston County? Correct. Okay. Correct. And again, it, it is a fire safety burn ban, but there have been occasions when the fire marshal or commissioners have started that burn ban earlier because things have been really dry. And if they do, ORCA can't do any enforcement on that because we can only enforce what's in our rule. And that's why the other counties, we don't do any enforcement on the safety fire danger because we don't have any of the fire restrictions in our rules for the other counties. And and the other clarification is those burn bans are, especially the Thurston County one, are related solely to residential yard way or yard waste burning, or, or it does not include recreational fires. Uh, if they want to ban recreational fires, that's a, they have to include that in a speci special designation. And we would not enforce on those because we don't have authority. Additional. I just said one plus one about um, Commissioner Close. The state regulator for fireworks is the Washington State Patrol's Fire Marshal Office. There, there is a RCW that surrounds and gives direction to that agency to regulate fireworks. What was that agency called? It's in the Washington State Patrol, and they have a uh, fire office um, and and I can you know I can give give Mike the RCW to hand off to you okay that would be great um I had one more question but I lost it but that's a lot of good info thank you so Emily one thing I would say is if if you're if history in other counties and the weather is saying that we should you know look at changing those dates the county commission should ask for it so if we could open up our pool Okay, that was gonna be, that was actually, you touched on the question that I forgot to ask. Um, if, like, if there was a recommendation to go by weather conditions instead of date, we could just initiate that conversation because the reason I'm thinking- It would be up to you to enforce it. Okay. 
One, the, one thing I would suggest if you're looking at dates, the problem we have a lot of times is the inconsistency between the six counties calling burn bans at different times. Mm -hmm. The one thing that's like Jen, Dan has mentioned that is probably as consistent as we've seen, but it's not year every year and it's not six counties. Why did that July 1st date where we start on July 15th? There was some talk on that several years ago and they kept it at July 15th. But if you want to expand those dates because we're getting drier and everything, that July 1st seems to be the most common amongst the cities, the counties. So if you're going to discuss it, that's probably where you'd start. But again, it's still not uniform because um, everybody goes off of the, the DNR, basically. Um, they do moisture testing and whatnot, and they use that. But yeah, broadening the, the burn bed out, basically moving the beginning date up to July 1st to make it a little more consistent. If you go by weather conditions, it's going to be earlier, too. Last year, I think we had some counties do it in June. Okay, so I want to bring this to a wrap. So did you have a final comment? Well, just, and so, Emily, I can reach out to Josh Cummings and Ben Miller-Todd just to, because actually I saw Ben at a meeting a couple months ago, and he said that there were upcoming discussions about coordinating on this. Haven't heard anything from him or Josh since, but I can follow up because I know that they're likely happy have been, or sounds like will be conversations about it. But. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, those conversations are happening now. So that'd be perfect timing. Okay, Joan? I just <clears throat> wanted to tell Emily of the three major cities here in Thurston County, uh, Tumwater was the last one to do a fireworks ban. And um, it's a struggle and uh, you get all kinds of you know responses and so forth. So if you're thinking of doing it, uh, start start soon and start you know way ahead of time and you know you know because there's a lot of, of of input from the community regarding uh, that issue. But we also tied it to what you're talking about now, which has to do with the weather and the heat and the climate and all of that kind of thing for our um, ban on fireworks. We finally got it passed. Drones only. That's what I say. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the good of the order? So I just have one item uh, because we're in proximity to the Capitol Mall. So the city of Olympia has been working on a Capitol Mall triangle sub area plan. And last night we got briefed on it and we'll be considering it on July 9th. And I wanted to make sure that at least the staff were aware in case you have further comment. I know we've been involved a little bit, but that will include a public plaza and amenities a street grid, higher density in the mall. And really the main change, the biggest change is the thing hindering development on the mall is the commercial parking minimums. And so we'll be eliminating commercial parking minimums unless you have zero parking spots and then you'll be required to have ADA spots. So, so there'll be a no zero, but there could be ADA as at a minimum. So um, we believe that that will quickly change the development conversation in the mall area and I'd be happy to I'll follow up with you on any of you on that conversation. Um, we have more space than Northgate. So if you grew up in the Puget Sound area and you've seen like the new Kraken facility built uh, in the mall parking lot, um, that's the kind of land uh, uh, space we have available in the city of Olympia. It won't be that kind of density for sure, but very transit oriented right by the freeway uh, and a great opportunity for us to build uh, a, a town center the Olympia way, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing nothing else, our meeting is adjourned. Take care, everyone, and congratulations, Jeff.